Northern Thailand is home to the unique Doi Satep Pui National Park, which has huge cultural, spiritual and economic importance to the people who live there. Chiang Mai is a royal city, the second city of Thailand, and I've met up with Sudarat, who works for the Forest Restoration Research Unit of Chiang Mai University, known as Foru. They are working with village communities to regrow the forest, and we've been supporting them at the Eden Project since 2002. Eden is learning from Foru about inspiring others to change their relationship with their environment. It's not my first time in Thailand. I've, I've been to Thailand several times before I started working at Eden. But it's my first time this far north to Chiang Mai and I'm incredibly excited to be here. <laughs> it's a beautiful country with beautiful people. So I'm here really to see what we've been doing, what our funding has contributed towards. Um, and try and work out how we can work more closely together in the future. Leaving the suburbs of Chiang Mai behind us, we headed straight to see Doi Satep Pui National Park. It covers more than 260 square kilometres and has more than 600 tree species compared to the 33 found in the whole of the UK. This is a unique biodiversity hotspot. You've got that big tree, is that a fig growing around yeah. it? Um, With a, it's quite amazing. It looks like some kind of elephant or dinosaur or something. Yeah, I think it's dinosaur skeleton. Yeah. Like it's inspiring to see firsthand this ancient primary forest. This rich jungle is many thousands of years old. In the last 50 years, over 40% of the national park has been destroyed by slash and burn agriculture as well as commercial logging. Hill tribe villages have cleared many areas to grow cash crops, initially opium and then vegetables, leaving weeds and bracken in the place of ancient forest trees. The villagers themselves have paid a heavy price. What was once verdant splendour is now infertile wasteland. Foru's grand ambition is to show others that this damage can be reversed and the first small step in regrowing the forest is collecting tree seeds. They have developed from scratch the best ways to collect, germinate and treat seeds and saplings for planting back into the forest. Engrandia spicati. Yeah. <laughs> so it's off this tree? Okay. And how big you reckon that tree is? Uh, 50 metres. Um, after years of patient research, they now know where and when to find the seeds they need. It's painstaking work, but they are making important new discoveries. Foru's main nursery is located in the National Park. I was shown around by Churtsak Kwarak, the nursery manager and forest scientist. Churtsak and his team have worked out the best methods for germinating the seeds and growing them into saplings. Sometimes we use the sulfuric acid. Right, to break the seed coats <laughs> so they germinate. Or scarification, look like this. Uh, this is what they're doing. So to, break the, to break the seed coat, yeah. to let water in, yeah. <laughs> yeah. With Eden support, Foro employs a team of two full-time researchers and two assistants. Over the last decade, the team has studied more than 400 tree species, choosing the best 45 to use for restoring the rich ecology of the forest. Steve Elliott is the project co-founder and has been in Thailand for more than 20 years. He introduced me to their host here at the National Park. Saudi Cap. Nice to meet you. And you. And you, you're the head of the National Park. 
Okay. Yeah. Very beautiful national park. Yeah. Very beautiful. He explained to me why the national park is encouraging the work of Foru. Okay. One of the biggest problems is that the fact that we have a lack of information about how to restore yeah. degraded areas, and this mm. this is why a project like this is yeah. is uh, important to generate that kind of information. Yeah. Yeah. So think, uh, actually, many people think that it's, it's very easy yeah. to to yeah. replant a forest, or even that the forest will come back on its own. Yeah. But uh, in in actual fact, it, it's not, and you have to pay attention to yeah. Yeah. the techniques yes. and. Things seed like collection. species selection, <laughs> seed, <laughs> yeah, seed collection, and so on, yeah. all that to, yeah. to make sure yeah, yeah, yeah. that uh, you're planting the best trees yeah. in the best places, yeah. really. Ban Me Sat Mai is a Hmong hill tribe village of 1800 people living within the national park boundary. The village moved here 60 years ago from higher altitudes. Traditionally, they were nomadic, living in the forest. Now they are settled farmers trying to meet the challenges of the 21st century. In the past, they cut swathes of the forest from the steep mountain sides to create fields to farm, but now they have moved their agriculture to the lower valley slopes. Forest fires used to be used by the villagers to clear the forest. Now they do everything they can to prevent them. This fire watch shelter is run by the villagers. They keep lookout throughout the dry season. Kun Neng, a former farmer, has lived all his life in the May Sap Valley. So Neng, um, before your, your village used to use fire to clear the forest, how has your relationship changed with fire? So he's saying that it's basically modernization, or he, he used the word patna, which means development of new ideas. Okay. And now they just recognize that fire. The is men from the village take turns to keep watch 24 hours a day for the outbreak of any fire. They now understand that destroying the forest affects their water supply. Their families continue their lives alongside them in the dry season. The very villagers who used to destroy the forest have now become its guardians. It shows, you, it shows things can change, it shows that people can change. It's emotionally uplifting really. The National Park is named after one of the most revered Buddhist temples in Thailand. Built in 1384, this renowned symbol of Chiang Mai contains a holy relic of the Lord Buddha himself and is one of the country's most renowned pilgrimage sites. Spectacularly located on its mountain top, the temple appears to be floating on a sea of trees, reflecting the sacred spiritual relationship between Buddhism and the natural world. The natural world is also of huge spiritual importance to the animistic belief system of the villagers of May Sat Mai. They believe this to be the tallest tree in the forest and that it has its own unique spirit. I felt privileged to take part in their tree worshipping ceremony. It was reassuring to discover how important the spiritual connection between people and the natural world remains in the 21st century. Uh, when you come somewhere like this and you see people that live in in the middle of nature, immersed in the trees and the, the forest and hearing their water problems and how they use the forest both for, a, for their daily needs and for their spiritual needs as well, um, it does have repercussions on what we how we feel at home and it does reinforce the fact that we're all part of nature not separate from it. Uh, do they normally grow in this area? Okay. In this recently planted experimental plot forest students are measuring the height and canopy width of the seedlings to identify the most suitable species for restoring the forest. This is the clever bit. Forest research has focused on choosing the right trees from the 600 species available. These are the ones which produced a fast-growing canopy to shade out weeds and produce lots of fruits to attract birds. The birds, in turn, 
introduce new seeds which adds to the species diversity. And in this plot, planted five years earlier, I felt a real sense of the forest. The canopy is closed, so there is shade killing off the weeds and cooling the soil to allow new tree seedlings to grow. All around the world, people are screaming about yeah. the loss of rainforest in yeah. particular. And what we've been able to uh, show people is that forest loss is not a one-way process. Yeah. That you can reverse it. When we and as soon as the villagers saw that these trees were really coming up, mm. they said, we've got to take care of this. We've got to do fire prevention. We've got something here that we can really show to the government that villagers can take care of their forests uh, as well as the government authorities. By getting people with different motivations to work together for the same end, Foru is a shining example of what can be achieved. There's pride just, uh, just walking in out the sun into the shade yeah. and to walk into shade uh, that you've helped to create. Back in the village, the next generation of May Sat Mai arrives early to go bird watching. A few years ago, these children would have killed birds with catapults, where now they watch them through binoculars. With Eden's support, Foru has set up the Birds and Environmental Club, helping the next generation to understand the importance of looking after the forest. about trying to make connections, trying to change perceptions and the way you change people's perceptions is by taking them out of their everyday environment and plugging them into something new which is exactly what we've experienced here and it's exactly what we try and replicate in a sense at Eden for the visitor.